So she writes, but the women we've chosen as our moral leaders aren't challenging us to ask the fundamental questions that leaders of faith have been wrestling with for thousands of years. Why are we here? Why do we suffer? What should we believe in beyond the limits of our puny selfhood? Well, Don, we had one more thing I wanted to talk to you about this week, and that was a opinion piece that ran in the New York Times called The Empty Religions of Instagram. And I loved this piece so much. So this woman, she wrote this sort of about this rise of a trend on Instagram of particularly women who have kind of become like gurus. So they're, they're sort of combining like self-help and wellness and maybe some like pop psychology. And but she this writer in The New York Times kind of equated them to pastors. They essentially are filling a religious kind of void for a lot of people, in particular women. And I loved this so much that I immediately went on Twitter and went to follow her. I think her name is Lee Stein. And I was like, oh, I'm going to write her an email. This is, wow, what a great piece. And then I see her, she has a tweet that's like, guys, you would not believe the number of uh, Twitter direct messages I've received over the past 12 hours that are like pleads to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Like you guys have to stop. But it's so sweet because she's so clearly thirsty for that. And she wrote that she was brought up in a, a Christian context and, and that sort of thing. But I just thought this was an incredibly astute piece. Did you happen to read it? I did. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's really something. No, no, look, celebrities kind of posing as pastors or celebrities taking the place of pastors is, is really nothing new. Uh, my, my pastor says, you know, when, when a couple was having marital problems, when he started his ministry, uh, when he started in the ministry, um, you know, the first people they would go to is the pastor, and then it was the first people they would go to is the counselor, and then it was the first people they would go to was the lawyer. And I think maybe it's morphed again where the first people that many go to are kind of their, their Instagram celebrities. Uh, I've often talked about in her heyday, Oprah really being kind of the new guru of the New Age movement. Uh, there was a, a clear mark where she went from being a remarkable interviewer, which she still is, as we saw this past week with the interview with the uh, with Harry and Meghan, uh, to being uh, a spiritual guru in so many people's lives. And 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 while I appreciate that the, the observation that um, you know a lot a lot of times the reflections of these kind of uh, self help gurus. Uh, and, and look, again, you could talk about the music of the Beatles playing that sort of role, you know, at some point uh, in the seven, 60s and 70s, uh, mainly 70s when they really turned spiritual. You could certainly talk about, um, uh, uh, you know, folks like uh, e even pastors becoming more celebrities than pastors, right? I mean, all of this is part of the same uh, thing. But, but they are dealing with worldview issues, right? Even if they don't ever get below the surface, even if they don't ever get deep enough to actually wrestle with what we would call the ultimate questions of where did I come from, why am I here, what does it mean to be human, what happens when I die, what's right and wrong. Uh, that's how we frame the ultimate questions around the Colson Center. Um, even if you don't get to that level, to say, for example, girl, you got this, in the ways that they say it, and as repetitive as they say it, is basically reflecting a deeper view of what it means to be human and whether people are sinful or not. Uh, you know, John, I do got this though. You, well, I, do, I just, you I just do. want I just, just want for the record. Know. Just for I the record, you, you. Well, I never, I never questioned it. <laughs> Thank um, you. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you, you know, this is, and and there, I think we're reflecting kind of worldviews as well by kind of the persona they put out. I mean, uh, uh, Glenn and Doyle was very popular when she was married to another man. And she often referred to her Christian faith. And then yeah. in the middle of this announces that she's getting a divorce, that she had met a soccer star and was gonna marry her, the soccer star. And so she, you know, basically left a marriage, went over, you know, to a, uh, a lesbian relationship, has, get, gets, gets quote unquote married, in, in that context. I mean, that reflects all kinds of deeply held beliefs totally. about did God make the world a particular way? What it counts as right and wrong? Who gets to say? 
And of course, the, the, the line you hear so often from these folks are, you have to follow your truth. Now, I don't want to put them all in the same category because I don't think they all do have the same message. My point is, um, so, I mean, a lot of them do. There's kind of a, a, you know, a niche there. But, but there are some that, that would have a better message. There are some that are very popular on Instagram. And, you know, for example, N.T. Wright has quite a following, you know, on sure. social media. Not be, yeah. you know, it, it, but, but of course what he is bringing to the table is something dramatically different. But there is, there is something to say about a culture in which people believe their spiritual authority to be a disembodied avatar, you know, uh, as opposed to uh, the, any sort of responsibility to their own local body or to th their neighbors or that sort of thing. Th this is what we've been talking about during the, during the pandemic and the idea of church being non-essential. And our point was the church has already been non-essential for a whole lot of Christians for a really long time. So, the, you know, the, the, the church being non-essential is a pre-existing condition that's made worse by COVID. It's not created by COVID. And I, I, I think that that's partly because we, we, we derive spiritual authority from places that it doesn't belong. But the, this piece was really insightful. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think that millennials in particular are inflicted with this. I do think that Gen X uh, uh, w women kind of started this trend in a lot of ways. And, um, and, and then, of course, the celebrity Christianity is not something that is – she, she really targeted her analysis at women. I, I think yeah. that it goes both ways depending on who yeah. you're kind of looking for. Yeah, and she – I want to say, too, I really – like, I appreciate what you said that some of these women – um, have some good things to say. I really personally like Brene Brown. I've read a couple of her books. Um, I don't like when she sort of uh, offers up a w sort of watered down, vague Christianity kind of thing. But she's incredibly smart, and she is a psychologist by training, so she has a lot of insight. Um, I don't know that. I don't know what Glennon Doyle's profession is um, outside of now on Instagram. Well, you know, she started as a mommy, one of the mommy bloggers, right? Okay, I mean, so it that was makes sense. like yeah. I'm in the I'm in the trenches with you as a mom, yeah. and then really has been elevated uh, because yeah. of remarkable kind of marketing. And, and there's obviously something there that people yeah. are, are, are they're scratching a need. But here, here's one of the things I want to ask you about this. And I, I don't, uh, b because one of the things that I have long appreciated uh, is this idea uh, is, uh, of a big enough worldview. So the fact that, mm. that these Insta what, what what did she call him? This was a, such a great word, instavangelist. You know, it's like tele televangelist is instavangelist. Yes. I love that phrase. Yeah. Um, one of the things that they're, we, we, there's no question they're peddling worldview. They're peddling deeply held beliefs. They're peddling a way of seeing life in the world. They're definitely peddling a way of seeing yourself, right? That, you know, it answers the question, what's wrong with me and how do I fix it? And a lot of times it has nothing at all to do with the gospel analysis of what's wrong with me and how do I, I fix it? Is this, is this a setup, though? Because if you don't get the human condition right, then when something hits you uh, from the side, a, a, deep, a deep failure personally or somebody else against you, a natural disaster of some kind, deeply uh, you know, felt pain and hurt, uh, Garber's line is that, and he was talking at this time specifically about students, that students need a big enough worldview so when they ha if they've only seen Christianity in this narrow way, and then they go to university, and suddenly they're getting it attacks on Christianity from all sides, their worldview is not big enough. And it seems to me that that's going to be a, a, a flaw of, of of so many inst evangelists is that they're giving such a narrow kind of self helpy view uh, of of life and of wholeness and of you know inner peace or whatever that it's not going to be able to handle real marital problems or, you know, addictions that, you know, that, that uh, inflict a family for, you know, years, maybe even longer. Um, does that make sense? I, yes. And I have a lot to, I have a lot to say about that. What <laughs> I, because I think they do offer, is that shocking that I have mm. a lot to say? <laughs> John's <laughs> laughing at me. No, I, I'm, please carry I on. I think you they got do this, offer at least a whole worldview. I wouldn't call it a big one, yeah. but I think their answer to all of that, to any sort of suffering, is it, it's someone else's fault. That's mm. their answer, right? 
Because if, girl, you got this and you follow your own truth, if your marriage is struggling, leave your marriage. If your friendships are struggling, you have to leave toxic people behind. If the world gets hit with a pandemic, it's because your neighbor refused to wear a mask at the grocery store. Like, you can see this play out on every level everywhere. This is Kamala mm. Harris saying we will give you dignity because we have to rely on everyone else to have any sort of happiness or whatever for ourselves. And if we don't find that we have it, it's someone else's fault. This is what, this is why we have so much of the cultural tension we have now is because we can't deal with our own either unhappiness or discontentment or jealousy or even actually, you know, real suffering. We don't know how to make sense of it other than to say, this had to be someone else's fault, which, of course, falls apart the minute you actually interrogate it in an honest way. Because if someone else hurt you, then you have the capability of hurting someone else, too. And if nobody here is innocent, then what do we do? You yeah. know, because the same person who's saying to you, girl, you got this, is also saying it to the girl who hurt you. So who's right? You know, and that's I mean, one of my one of my biggest <laughs> that's a, pet peeves. That's a that's is, a real logistical challenge, isn't it's it? An, it's an issue. <laughs> one of my biggest pet peeves of these people on Instagram. I, I, I swear, like, John, go on Instagram today. You'll find someone who said something like this. They'll do a post that's like, if you're having a bad day or if you're struggling or whatever it is, I see you. I see you. I hear you. You're not alone. And I'm like. You don't. <laughs> you can't see me. You can't hear me. And I can't see you or hear you. Like, that's the most embarrassing, like, weird thing to say. And that gets back to what you're saying about the church and actual human interaction is like, why are you posting this kind of – You that, that's the whole problem with you right there is that you by nature can't see me or hear me or know anything about me. And – yeah, I don't understand why we would look there. You just sounded like the Jordan people. Peterson of mommy bloggers right there. Like, <laughs> I think you should do this. You should be the anti and just the start anti. going, I don't see you. <laughs> I, don't, I, I literally can't hear you or see you. I know nothing about you. Yeah. I, I'm not thinking about you. I'm <laughs> Well, you know, Chuck Colson used to sum up. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to categorize worldviews around different questions. Where did I come from? Why am I here? And so on. And But two of the most fundamental questions is what's wrong with the world and how can I fix it? And it seems to me what you're saying, and I, you're, you know, you know more about these folks than I do, but th this idea that, that what's wrong with the world is them and how do you fix it right. is to look inside. And it just reminded me of one of my favorite lines from a series that Chuck Holson did right before he passed away called Doing the Right Thing, which was a mm -hmm. series on ethics. And they were talking about, the, you know, on a philosophical level, the problem with this idea that we are all, you know, uh, the center of our own kind of ethical framework or ethical universe and that the answer is to look inside. And so my, my, my friend Michael Miller, who's worked for the Acton Institute for a long time, a remarkable guy, and he said, you know, we've told this whole generation of young people to look inside and to go find themselves. Mm. It's like, what if they find themselves and when they do, they're jerks? What now? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, like it's, really a, it's a great point. Yeah, no, it like, is. This, this can't be it, right? <laughs> yeah, when you're the problem. And, and that's, the, yeah. that's what we say. And, you know, that's even, you know, going back to the issue of, of um, you know, womanhood and how we talk about what it means to be a woman and gender and so on. That, you know, there, there's a lot of ways we're falling down on that issue. And, and, and sometimes these folks, uh, you know, the idea that we always believe the women, the, the woman is always right, mm -hmm. is that the woman yeah. is always on, is ne never the one at fault. And, and there's right. all kinds of ways that moral guilt is pushed outside uh, in our attempt to try to fix maybe past problems. And I, uh, th that, that it doesn't help if it's not true, because eventually gravity wins. Eventually you come face to face with those things. Eventually you realize, no, I've made a mess of things. Um, and, uh, the, and, and what happens in that culture is there's no forgiveness available, right? You, 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 you need to be, what, how did you put it? You're, you're toxic. You need to be put out. Yep. And, and there, there's, there, there's no restoration and no forgiveness. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's somehow considered brave, even though I think that's the opposite of brave. Mm -hmm.